Welcome to Unit 2 of the Compliant Trade Obligations to Clients versus Customers. Let's get started. In this unit, we will compare and contrast obligations to clients versus obligations to customers. To do this, we will review examples which illustrate how your obligations to consumers apply according to the working relationship you establish with them. This includes regulatory obligations, fiduciary obligations, and general obligations. Sophie, the property owner from the previous unit, has signed the listing agreement with Matthew, triggering fiduciary obligations for him and his brokerage. Now it's time to take a closer look at these and other obligations owed to clients and customers. What exactly are the obligations owed by Matthew and his brokerage to Sophie as a client? Similarly, what are the obligations owed by Lily and her brokerage to Oliver as a customer? There are three obligation categories. First, we have regulatory obligations. These obligations are owed to customers and clients alike. Then we have fiduciary obligations. These obligations are owed to clients only. Finally, we have general obligations, eight in total. Two of these apply to customers. In the client relationship, all eight obligations apply. Let's do a deeper dive on the specific obligations listed under each of these categories. The regulatory obligations that the salesperson and brokerage owes both clients and customers include Disclosure of representative capacity Agency relationships and forms To deliver agreements, offers and statements To account Remuneration provisions Not to induce, breach or make certain promises Click each item to view a brief explanation on what these regulatory obligations entail. You must view this content before you can advance. Disclosure of Representative Capacity As the listing salesperson, Matthew meets with Sophie regarding the sale of her house. Juliet, a prospective buyer, is interested in Sophie's property and approaches Matthew inquiring if he can also work with her. Matthew must explain his role clearly to both parties, clarifying his services and obligations to each one under multiple representation. He would also give Sophie an informative brochure documenting the services offered by the brokerage and ask her to sign a written acknowledgement that he has made this disclosure. Agency Relationships and Forms if Matthew confirms he will also be working with Juliet as a buyer client, he will present to her a buyer representation agreement for her to sign, outlining the specific date on which the agreement takes effect and the date on which it expires. Matthew must make sure the agreement is fully complete in order to maintain regulatory compliance. He would also need to obtain written consent from Sophie to work with Juliet as a client in the same trade. To deliver agreements, offers, and statements. If an offer is presented and accepted, Matthew must provide a copy of the Agreement of Purchase and Sale, or APS, signed by the buyer to Sophie, his client, as soon as possible. To account. Matthew meets with one of his buyer clients who made a successful offer for a downtown condo and is dropping off a deposit check. Matthew must now deliver it to the listing brokerage's administrator as soon as possible. The administrator would have to place the funds in the brokerage's real estate trust account within regulatory timelines. Matthew, the listing salesperson, must also explain his brokerage commission rates to Sophie, the seller. For example, Matthew explained that Can City, as the listing brokerage, charges a commission at a fixed rate of 2.5%.
He also discusses with Sophie what she is prepared to offer a cooperating brokerage. Sophie agrees to a 2.5% commission rate for the cooperating brokerage. So if Matthew manages to help Sophie sell her property for $800,000, then the commission payable would be $40,000 plus HST, $20,000 plus HST to Matthew's brokerage, and $20,000 plus HST to the cooperating brokerage. There are other commission calculations allowed in the Code of Ethics. Click the Legislation button to learn more. not to induce, breach, or make certain promises. Matthew is approached by one of Sophie's neighbors to list his house. At their initial meeting, Matthew asks Alex, the seller, if he has entered into a listing agreement with any other brokerage. The seller admits he was working with a salesperson from a different brokerage, but was unhappy with the service he has received. Matthew confirms that the existing listing agreement expires in 30 days. Matthew must explain to the seller that he cannot list the property at the time because the other agreement is still current and valid. Matthew must also inform the seller that he cannot represent him as long as he is being represented by another brokerage. Matthew may also advise the owner to contact him once his contract with the current brokerage expires while considering any holdover provisions and limitations. Let's now discuss fiduciary obligations. The legal system recognizes special relationships in which one party, known as the fiduciary, must look after the best interests of the other party, known as the principal or client. Fiduciary relationships entail trust and confidence and require that fiduciaries act honestly, in good faith, and strictly in the best interests of the beneficiaries of such relationships. Oliver is Lily's customer as documented in a service agreement, so these fiduciary obligations don't apply in their relationship. On the other hand, Sophie is Matthew's client as documented in a representation agreement. Therefore, these fiduciary obligations do apply in their relationship. They include not misusing confidential information, maintaining utmost loyalty, avoiding conflicts of interest, disclosing conflicts, and disclosing financial benefits, not making secret profit. Click each item to view a brief explanation on what these fiduciary obligations entail. You must view this content before you can advance. Do not misuse confidential information. Sophie, the seller client, tells Matthew that she is not in a hurry to sell the property and will probably not accept the first offer that he brings to her. The property is an important source of income for her, and she does not want to decide in haste. Matthew must keep this information confidential, as disclosure to potential buyers can risk Sophie's ability to negotiate during the transaction. Matthew must also not use the client's confidential information for his own interests to harm his client or to interfere with her affairs. Maintain utmost loyalty. Matthew receives an offer for Sophie's property from a prospective buyer working with another brokerage. Minutes later, Matthew receives two more offers from a former colleague at a different brokerage. Matthew must maintain loyalty to Sophie by presenting all three offers submitted for her consideration, regardless of where the offers came from.
Avoid conflicts of interest. A couple approaches Matthew at an open house he organized at Sophie's home. They are interested in the property and want Matthew to work with him to submit an offer for the property. Matthew confirms that they are not working with another brokerage. He must explain multiple representation and the limitations in services provided to both parties, obtaining their acknowledgement and consent in writing before proceeding. If even one party is not in agreement, multiple representation cannot happen. Bear in mind that conflicts of interest are not limited to multiple representation. They would also arise if Matthew were to purchase a client's property for himself or for a relative or sell his own property to a client. Disclose conflicts. Matthew's sister wants to buy Sophie's house. When drafting the offer, Matthew must also provide written disclosure confirming, among other information, facts which are relevant under the circumstances, including the sibling relationship with a prospective buyer. This obligation is not limited to conflicts arising from family relationships. Additionally, Matthew must disclose any personal or third party interests that conflict or might conflict with the client's interests. He must also reveal the exact nature and extent of the conflict in writing and obtain the client's signature. Disclose financial benefits. Matthew knows that moldy basements are a common problem in the area. He advises Sophie to have a contractor conduct a home inspection to rule out any mold issues and get more value for her property. Matthew recommends an inspector with whom he has a long-standing relationship. Matthew must disclose in writing to Sophie whether he receives a referral fee or other direct or indirect financial benefit from the inspector. Also, Matthew should consider following the leading practice of referring clients to three different professionals. While he can express his opinion on the work of each referral as part of protecting her best interests, he must let Sophie make an independent choice and never pressure her to work with a particular individual. Matthew must not make a profit at the client's expense by providing improper advice or accepting payment from another party without the knowledge and written consent of the client. Let's move on to general obligations. There are eight general obligations in total. Two of these obligations apply in the customer relationship. That means that Lily and her brokerage owe Oliver, her customer, the following obligations. Exercising care and skill and ensuring honesty. The client relationship entails a broader commitment. Therefore, all eight obligations apply. In other words, Matthew and his brokerage owe Sophie, his client, the following obligations. Performing mandate, obeying lawful instructions, acting in person, negotiating favorable terms, maintaining confidentiality, disclosing information, exercising care and skill, and ensuring honesty. Click next to review what these general obligations require and how they apply to client relationships versus customer relationships. First, we will review the general obligations owed to customers. Click on the titles on screen to examine what each of these entails. You must view this content before you can advance. Exercise, care, and skill. Oliver found a property that meets his search criteria. He asks Lily, the salesperson with whom he signed a customer service agreement, to book an appointment to see the property. Oliver shows great interest in the property. However, since it is an older house, he wants to know whether there are any termite or plumbing-related problems, which are typical of older homes in the area. The seller does not have a home inspection report to offer. Lily must possess the required knowledge and skill, provide complete and accurate information, and recommend customers like Oliver seek the specialized advice of relevant experts where applicable. In this case, Lily could advise Oliver to submit an offer which is conditional on a home inspection acceptable to him. Ensure honesty. 
Lily is showing a condo townhouse to a young couple who are her customers. They are happy that the property comes with a covered garage and two outdoor parking spots because they both drive to work in separate vehicles and they own a couple of motorcycles, which they prefer to keep indoors. Lily knows there is a commercial plaza right next door to the townhouse complex with several businesses, including a daycare. Lily finds out later that week that parking can actually be problematic during daycare drop-off and pickup times. Although spots are assigned at the townhouse complex, daycare staff and patrons often park in spots designated for townhouse owners. The daycare has received numerous warnings, but the issue remains. Lily must demonstrate honesty and integrity of intent in all dealings. In this case, Lily needs to advise her customers to visit the unit at different times to observe parking behavior and decide for themselves if this could be an issue. Up next, we will review the general obligations owed to clients. Click the titles on screen to examine each of these obligations. You must view this content before you can advance. Perform Mandate Before signing a listing agreement, Matthew explains his marketing strategy to Sophie, his seller client. In addition to showings and open houses, Matthew will post for sale signs on the property and advertise the property through the community newspaper and his own website. Sophie agrees and signs the listing agreement, which authorizes the brokerage to use these marketing strategies. Matthew must perform the mandate. In other words, carry out his duties as set out in the listing agreement. He must act only within specified permissions and seek clarification where required. Obey instructions. Sophie will be out of town for the next two weeks. While she's away, she wants Matthew to be present for all showings and request identification from all potential buyers before touring the house. Matthew must agree to obey Sophie's instructions. However, Matthew must not follow instructions that are unlawful. For example, creating misleading ads about the property at the client's request or agreeing to sign something on behalf of the client without the proper authority or power of attorney. Act in person. Alex is Sophie's neighbor. He had approached Matthew to inquire about working with him, but had an existing agreement with another brokerage. Alex is no longer working with the brokerage that listed his home, and the holdover period has ended. He is ready to meet with Matthew to discuss listing his own home. Matthew must provide detailed information to Alex with regards to his brokerage's array of service options, including client relationships, and disclose his brokerage's role as the agent. The goal for Alex is to understand that he is authorizing the brokerage and all registrants employed by it to act on his behalf when signing a listing service agreement. Negotiate favorable terms. Matthew receives an offer for his client Sophie's property. Upon careful review, Matthew outlines concerns about the property's proposed closing date being sooner than anticipated. Matthew needs to advance Sophie's interests by assisting in negotiations and by drafting favorable terms and conditions. He knows that Sophie needs a 90 day closing date instead of the buyer's proposed 45 day closing. In this particular case, Matthew could suggest changes that will result in better terms from Sophie's perspective, for example, presenting a counteroffer with a time frame that suits Sophie's needs. In addition, Matthew should also inform Sophie that a counteroffer may result in the buyer walking away.
Maintain confidentiality. Sophie's tenants, who initially gave her 90-day notice, have just left without paying the third and second to last month of their tenancy. Sophie, who was not initially in a rush to sell the house, now feels compelled to accept the first acceptable offer that she gets. Matthew must not disclose this information, as it could weaken Sophie's position in negotiations. In fact, Matthew must maintain total confidentiality regarding all matters, including Sophie's personal and financial information, her motivation for buying or selling, or the amount to be paid or accepted during negotiations. Disclose information. Negotiations are finally underway with a prospective buyer for the sale of Sophie's house. She's now turned her attention to finding a new property to buy. She asks Matthew to accompany her to an open house nearby. Sophie falls in love with the place and wants to submit an offer right away. However, Matthew overhears some other visitors talk about the loss of parking permits in the area due to changes in city bylaws. Matthew must determine and disclose to Sophie his client any relevant information about the property and the transaction. In this case, Matthew should discuss this with Sophie in private and suggest they verify any permit issues with the municipality before making an offer. It might be difficult for Sophie to rent the place without parking, so Matthew must share this information with her, preferably in writing, especially if she is eager to purchase the property. Click the Pro Tip button to learn more. Bear in mind that in our scenario, Matthew was lucky enough to have heard the conversation about the loss of parking permits in the area. There's no guarantee that you will have the same luck all the time. Nevertheless, even if he hadn't heard anything, he still has an obligation to determine and disclose to the client all relevant information about the property and the transaction. Exercise Care and Skill At an open house for a different property, Sophie asks Matthew if she should rely on the inspection report available to visitors. He notices it is three years old. Matthew must possess the required knowledge and skill, provide complete and accurate information, and recommend clients like Sophie seek the specialized advice of relevant experts like home inspectors where applicable. In this case, Matthew can explain the risks of making decisions about the purchase of a home based on an outdated document, especially with properties of a certain age. However, there might still be some good information in a snapshot of the property that is not up to date. Also in exercising care and skill, Matthew should advise Sophie to include a property inspection condition in the APS so she can verify the condition of the home with a qualified professional of her choosing versus relying solely on the seller's inspection report. Ensure Honesty Matthew is showing a property to two other clients, an older couple. They are looking for a small townhouse in a quiet neighborhood. The couple asks Matthew about traffic in the area. Matthew is aware that ongoing construction of a new transit line nearby often leads to traffic being diverted to the main intersection around Sophie's place. Matthew must demonstrate honesty of intent in all dealings. In this case, Matthew must advise the couple about the situation and recommend that they visit the area at different times to observe traffic flows and decide for themselves if the property would meet their search criteria. Time for a quick knowledge check. To whom do salespersons and brokerages owe these obligations? Choose your answer from the drop-down list. Click Submit to continue.
Exercising care and skill and ensuring honesty are obligations owed to both clients and customers alike. Sorry, that's not correct. Regulatory obligations are owed to both clients and customers alike. Fiduciary obligations are owed to clients only. And general obligations are owed to clients and partially to customers. You have now reached the end of Unit 2 in the Compliant Trade, Obligations to Clients versus Customers. In this unit, we compared and contrasted obligations to clients versus obligations to customers. Now you will be able to recognize how your obligations to consumers apply according to the working relationship you establish with them, including regulatory obligations, fiduciary obligations, and general obligations. Click the Exit tab or the X button to advance to Unit 3, Advertising in Real Estate. Time for a quick knowledge check. To whom do salespersons and brokerages owe these obligations?